Hey guys, Do Rag Daddy is back. <laughs> Just kidding. But today we're actually going to be learning about a manometer and we're going to be doing an example manometer problem. Now, if you guys remember, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but basically a manometer is used to measure small pressure differentials. So we're going to be calculating the pressure in the air tank right here. This tank holds air and this is a multi fluid manometer. So as we can see here, we have water right here in this part and this next fluid is oil and then this next fluid becomes mercury right so what in turn is going on here we sort of have a, an atmospheric pressure pushing down on these fluids which are in turn pushing up or down as you want to see it right on this air and causing a certain pressure there so it's our job to find out what that pressure is now how are we going to do that now remember we have our um, density equation rho g delta z right we're going to use that to help find the pressure in this tank now remember what i said about um pressure changing in the vertical um plane and not changing in the horizontal plane it's sort of the same thing here it is the same thing here so basically as we're going down we have our pressure increasing right and as we come back up our pressure starts to decrease now when we get to this point right what can we do we'll find that we can actually ignore everything that went on below this point because what sort of goes on is we're increasing, increasing, increasing in pressure, then we're reducing in pressure, right? So we sort of add and then subtract the same thing. So anything past this point right here, because this is where the fluids change, right? We can ignore it. So the only thing we're taking into account here, the only difference in altitude rather, is the difference in altitude from when the fluid starts to when it ends and turns into and changes to the next fluid. So what are we going to have here? So we have our atmospheric pressure, right? We're trying to calculate this pressure in the air tank. So we're going to start out with our atmospheric pressure. So let me write P tank is equal to, this is going to be P A T M, right? Atmospheric pressure. Now I wrote plus for a reason. Now from this point, to this point, right? We ended up decreasing from our original altitude. So we went from here to here. Even though we went down and came back up, the amount that we came back up by was not equal to the amount, it was less than the amount that we went down by, right? So we don't really, it's, it's a total a decrease in altitude, right? From here to here. Now what about from here to this next fluid? We have here, goes up, goes up, comes back down, but we're still higher than we originally started, right? So we have an, a total increase in altitude. What about right here to here? We have a total increase in altitude again, right? It's the same thing. So what we're gonna end up doing, right? We're gonna have, always add your atmospheric pressure because that's always taken into account, right? Then we're gonna have rho, I'm gonna call this, okay, so this is gonna be rho of mercury, which is Hg, right? Mercury, times G for gravity, this rho is density, remember? And then this delta Z is just this delta Z3. Right? Then now, as we measure from this point to this point, we're going to subtract because we went up in the end, right? Our altitude increased in the end. So we're going to have minus rho of oil times the same gravity. Our gravity is not changing, right? Times delta Z2. And then what about from this point to this point? We went up in altitude totally, right? So we're going to have minus rho of water, H2O, times the same gravity, times that delta Z1. And that's about it. But what we have here, this is going to give us sort of like a funny type of unit. Now, when we have our rho G delta Z equation, right, we're going to get a unit that sort of looks like this. Now... The units for rho, density is given in, remember, mass over volume, right? So kilograms per meters cubed. And we're multiplying that times gravity, which is meters per second squared. And we're multiplying that in our change in um, altitude. So that's just going to be meters, right? Now, what we find when we multiply this out, we end up getting something that looks like this.
right? Once we do our multiplication out and everything, we get something that ends up looking like this. And when we cancel out our units further, we get end up some we end up with something that looks like this. Now, what 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 type of unit is this? This is a squared. What type of unit is that? It's not anything I've seen before. So we can't really use this to be honest. So we have to bring in our conversion factors. Now, these conversion factors that I've written up here, this is what we're going to use to figure this out, right? We're trying to get this rho, the, the rho g delta z is not in kilopascals, and we want that in kilopascals because we're given our atmospheric pressure in kilopascals, right? So what we're going to do in turn for this rho g z, we're going to end up, in the end it's just going to be dividing by a thousand, but I want you guys to know what, where that dividing by a thousand comes from. So when we get our rho g delta z, right, we end up with, uh, let me see if I remember this. Right. Yeah, so we end up with this, right? We're going to multiply this by, we know that 1 Newton is equal to 1 kilogram per second squared. I mean, kilogram times meters per second squared, right? So that's going to help us cancel out our kilograms, right? But we're still left with our Newtons, right? So now to get rid of our Newtons and to change that into kilopascals, 1 kilopascal is equal to 1,000 newtons per meter squared or one kilonewton per meter squared and I'm not gonna go too much into the algebra and everything but once you cancel these out you're gonna end up getting a kilopascal as the unit so I mean just keep that in mind and we're gonna go ahead and solve this problem okay so now we've given we've been given some values here for our Delta Z one we have 0 0.2 meters for our delta Z2, we have 0 0.3 meters. And for our delta Z4, delta Z3, we have 0 0.4 meters, right? For our density of water, we have 1,000 kilograms per meters cubed. Oil density is 850 kilograms per meters cubed. And the density of mercury is 13,600 kilograms per, me per meters cubed. So let's go ahead and calculate this. I'm gonna go ahead and erase this to give us a little bit more space. Now, we begin that atmospheric pressure is 101.035 kilopascals. Atmospheric pressure might not always be 101.035 kilopascals, but they're generally, I think it's, generally they're going to give it to you if they don't want you to use a, a certain type of atmospheric pressure. But this time they've given us 101.035 kPa, right? So what, what we need to do to calculate the pressure of the air in the tank, I'm just gonna write P tank, and this is going to be equal to, let's try and take it in rows, I guess. This is our PATM, right? Atmospheric pressure, 101.035 kilopascals. And we want our final answer in kilopascals, right? So we're gonna, remember, we start from this point and ended up at a lower altitude, so we're gonna add that, right? So calculating rho of um, mercury, we have 13,600, right? kilograms per meters cubed. Then we have times G for gravity, which is 9.81 meters per second squared, times our delta Z, three. So our delta Z, three is 0 0.4 meters. And then this is all gonna be over a thousand, right? And the reason I'm saying it's over a thousand, we know what we just did to get that over a thousand, right? So, I mean, we know where that comes from. It's just using those conversion factors that were previously given. Now, what we're gonna do is take into account this second fluid, oil, right? Now this oil gives us rho of oil times G, same G for gravity, times delta Z2. So we get, because we're going from a lower altitude to a higher altitude, we decrease in pressure. So we get minus, this density is 850 kilograms per meters cubed times 9.81 meters per second squared times delta Z2 is 0 0.3 meters. And that's all over a thousand, again, to get us into kilopascals, right? It's pretty simple. So now from this point to this point, did we increase or decrease in altitude? 
we increased in altitude, which means, which means the pressure from that point to that point went down, right? So, our, which means we have to subtract the pressure, rather, let me say. So this gives us our rho of water, which is 1,000 kilograms per meters cubed times that 9.81 meters per second squared times 0 0.2 meters. And that's all over 1,000. Marker is getting a little bit dry. And if you guys know, if you guys are really good at algebra, really solid, you'll know that we can just add all of these up and divide everything by 1,000. But I mean, I just did this just to take it step by step. So I'm going to go ahead and calculate this. And I'm, I'm actually going to calculate these individual rows, GHs, uh, well, G delta Zs, rather, so that we can see what is going on exactly. So we have, so for our final result, we're going to have 101.035 kPa plus, and this is going to be minus, minus, and then that's going to give us our final P tank. So what we're doing here, it's going to end up being, for the first part, we get... We get 53.37 kilopascals. And our units are matching up, right? That's really important. For the second part, we get 2.50 kilopascals. Or let me say 2.502 kilopascals. And for the third part, we get 1.962 we get kilopascals. Now, what we're going to end up with here, right, once we add all of those together, or subtract as you want to look at it, we end up with 149.941 kilopascals, right? So, um, I mean, that's, that's basically our final answer. Now, they might try and ask you these, this sort of, like, they might try and throw in some curveballs at you. And I might say, like, for example, what's uh, what's the gauge pressure in the tank? Or what's the gauge pressure, right? Now, I mean, you just have to know the gauge pressure is just going to be the difference between this and then the original atmospheric pressure. So you would just calculate. Basically, you're just looking for the rho g delta z's in this situation. So you would just subtract this atmospheric pressure from this pressure in the tank. So with that, we would get 149.941 minus. 101.035, and that would give us 48.906, right? So P gauge equals 48.906 kilopascals. And that's really, that's really all there is to it. That's basically a typical uh, manometer problem. Um, I mean, that's, I mean, that's really all there is to it. So please stay tuned and we're going to be covering more topics as we go along. I hope I was able to explain this as in, a, in a pretty reasonable fashion. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments and please be sure to like the video and subscribe. Thank you very much.